Peaches with Livingston and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my charmingly diabolical protege, Tangella, and to this side, my rather cultured and somewhat peevish chamberlain, Mr. Livingston. Have we an incredibly marvelous show for you tonight? First up as our guest, we'll have America's prodigal werewolf son joining us for a mirthful chin wag. You may remember him as Eddie on the Munsters or as Mark on the Saturday morning craft program Lidsville. But his mum called him Butch and so shall we for the fabulous Butch Patrick will be gracing our guest chair this evening. He'll tell us all about his acting career, which so happens to span over five decades and which I should also mention has not yet ceased. But I gather we'll chat mostly about the Munsters, as that is one of Tangella's most favorite programs, is it not? And I think even Livingston enjoys it to some degree as well. I find it tolerable, but frankly, I prefer the Adams family. He does so, only because he's tall and he grumbles like Lurch. Mm. And of course, it wouldn't be Creature Features unless we featured a feature about creatures. So tonight we shall present Teenagers from Outer Space. Wait, didn't we just show this one? Negative. Our last presentation was exactly two years ago. Two years. One hundred and three weeks and six days. Ah, oh, I do recall now. In any case, it's a purely brilliant film directed by Spielberg, if I remember correctly, and should leave you and the rest of our friends at home most amused and excessively entertained. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of Teenage Monster Fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome to the show. It's Creature Feature Time. And you know what? It's going to be a fun night. And you know why it's going to be a fun night? Because we've got Butch... Patrick, Eddie Munster. You know, I knew you more as as Mark on Lidsville. Yeah, that was a that was the summer of seventy one. That was a lot of fun. That was a wonderful program. It was the Charles Nelson Riley, Billy Hayes, the Crofts. They were right. crazy, cuckoo, kooky people. Oh no, that was fun. And you know, we had that in the UK as well. Yeah. It was like one of the few. I don't think we had puff and stuff. No, we had, no, no. Puff and we had the Munsters, Bugaloos. The Bugaloos. That was a British show. I know. That was the a British show. The reason I did Lidsville was I was hoping to meet the girl in the Bugaloos. Oh, there were several. Which one? No, just the girl in the Bugaloos. Like the, the bee. One. Well, they were all bees, uh, right? Yeah, the, she was uh, Caroline Ellis was her name. Oh, all right. We're going to have to look that up. I think up she was Hope or Faith or whatever. Right, but they all had British accents. Didn't yes, they? Yes. Nice. yes, they were British. That's nice. All right, so we're going to watch a movie tonight with Butch, and it's called Teenagers from Outer Space. Have you seen this one before? I have, those those teenagers. Hmm. You know, we we chose this movie specifically for you because you were like a teenage heartthrob. Uh, in the seven, or yeah, late 60s, early 70s. I was known, known to be on a, a cover or two of 16 or Tiger Beat. Right. In this <laughs> film, we've got people throbbing hearts. Mm. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a bit of a connection. Yeah, I see that. 
not so much. All right, so we're going to get started with the film, but when we come back, we're going to learn everything we can from Butch Patrick. So you guys stay with us. Dr. Mason, Dr. Mason. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess it was nothing. A sudden light reflection, it startled me. There's no doubt a comet or a meteor. No, it, it seemed to be a, a drill-shaped thing, revolving. I know, it, it must have been my imagination, but it makes me realize how desperately alone the Earth is. Hanging in space like a speck of food floating in the ocean. Sooner or later to be swallowed up by some creature floating by. Oh, come now. Time will tell, Dr. Mason. We can only wait and wonder. Wonder how. Wonder when. Preliminary findings. Thor reporting. 
42 saturation degrees and 96 volumes. Intermediate fluctuation in Marfan content. Derek reporting. Tridex mixer components ratio exceeding 7 to 1.4. Moral reporting. Diagonal adjustment reading resisting structural forms by 2.8.0 vernums. Saw reporting. Uneven cartoid levels intersect planes below 0.03. Surface readings register above minimum requirements. Morrow, go below and bring up the young Gargan specimen. Now the decision depends on its reactions. Wait, Captain. I have found evidence of intelligent beings on this planet. Of what concern are foreign beings? Of none to you, Thor. Just as you were so unconcerned when you destroyed this small creature. So bravely. It was no more than an insect. But it had life. And that life you had to take to satisfy your endless hunger for killing. Silence, both of you. Proceed, bring the Gargan. That will not be necessary, Captain. Conditions here will be reported as unsatisfactory, as they were on the other planets we have charted. By what authority? You will prepare for takeoff. The ship will leave this planet immediately. According to our code of operations... You may forget the code of operations, Captain. Only civilized beings could have made the inscription on this metal piece. We shall not have the thousands of Gargans brought here to destroy them. You have concern for foreign beings over our mission to locate grazing land for our Gargan herds? Recall, it is necessary as a reserve food supply for our people. Our people? We live like parts of a machine. We don't know our fathers or mothers were raised in cubicles. The sick and the old are put to death. It is the one and only way to maintain the supreme race. Have you forgotten that? Our people have forgotten. They have been made to forget for centuries. But I have learned how it once was. Families, brothers and sisters, there was happiness, there was love. Of what do you speak? From where have you learned such things? I have read. I have read from this book. I discovered it and kept it hidden. Somehow it survived the flames of the Annihilators when our people were turned into mechanized slaves centuries ago. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture and death for this treason. The High Court may judge me after we have accomplished our mission. We will find an uninhabited planet to which the herds of Gargans may be shipped without endangering civilized beings. Let me see that book. I am interested to see what sways your mind so heavily. You may have it. <laughs> Bring up the Gargan. You were a fool, Derek. This book has poisoned your mind, and you shall suffer for it. Captain, if the Gargans are shipped here, the inhabitants may destroy them. That possibility alone makes it worthwhile to locate an uninhabited planet. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Keep him under guard, Thor. I will study the reactions of the young Gargan. Or the High Court has you executed. You should be made to watch what happens when we return here with the Gargans. By the elements alone, they will grow to millions of times their original size in less time than it takes for the sun to rise and fall. It thrives, Captain. Already I can feel it has grown heavier. We shall return to our base and lead the transport ships here. Soon, this planet will be covered with full-grown Gargans. A safe distance from our planet, yet their meat will be available to us for the harvesting. Repack the instruments. I shall radio back the news of our success. Captain! Captain, something has gone wrong. Look here. What? What has happened? I do not know. 
it suddenly fell limp and now does not move. Assemble the TRS is hooking the gas grading instruments. Be quick! The atmosphere here tested above minimum but the Gargan species cannot live due to excessive nitrogenic gas compounds emitted in our preliminary diagnosis. Then this planet will be reported as unsuitable? Repack the instruments and prepare for takeoff. We will continue our search in another solar system. And when we return to our home base, you will be presented to the High Court with the evidence against you. Thor, solve. Find the prisoner and prepare him for the isolation chamber. I will make contact with base. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back. We are still watching Teenagers from Outer Space with Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster from the Munsters. Really quick on this film. Um, did you notice that when the skeleton of the dog fell, there was like strings? I didn't notice that, but I noticed a lot of people came out of a very small spaceship. I know. You know, I think they did not have the budget for a proper, <laughs> a proper mothership on this film. But well, entertaining. Oh, absolutely entertaining. I mean, some of the special effects in this film are completely grisly yeah. no they're heinous but they're, it was entertaining for the time right well you know special effects one of the things about the monsters we had very you know i guess primitive special effects but they worked just like oh, you had movie. fantastic special effects mm -hmm. no there was one we're going to talk about that but first I, I we have to learn how you got that gig <laughs> well it was like kind of like first of all they had cast they wanted billy moomy and bill moomy's mom wasn't crazy about him being in makeup so they turned it down at the time, I was living in the Midwest with my grandmother, so right. I wasn't even around for the audition process. Then they hired a kid named Happy Derman. The producers made the pilot. The network liked everybody, but they wanted a different mom and a different kid. Right. So Happy was out, not happy about it. Ha, ha, ha. And then what they did is they contacted me. My agent convinced them to fly me in. I went to the studio and did a screen test with Yvonne DiCarlo. They liked the chemistry. They were going to hire Yvonne anyway, I'm pretty sure. But that's how it came to be. That's fabulous. You know, I saw the pilot that had the happy. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think that's his fault. I think no. he was misdirected to behave that I believe so. They were, they, were, they were telling him to be very angry and, and growling, and then they decided that's not the direction they wanted to go. And he probably, may have, maybe he could have been happy had they directed him to be happier. Right. Well, I noticed in, in the official pilot, mm -hmm. the one that you're in, they almost did the same scene where you're up on that. They did. Exactly, thing. up high and being picked up and playing with the little... You're being testy. Being testy. And the only thing I didn't like about that first one, they made me like suck my thumb when I went to bed. It's like, oh, man, you know, right. come on, jeez. Right, But, you know, you don't get your own way when you're... Now, how old were you at the time? I was uh, almost turning 11, but I was playing almost like eight. Right. Because I was real small. They always do that. They yeah, always they cast an older child, a, sometimes even adults. You know, they liked me because I was mentally older, physically younger, but, you know, it worked out well. So you flew out for this audition, mm -hmm. and it was like you had to move, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, my mom was living in the East Coast. I flew out for the audition. My uncle took me, and then when I got the part, I lived with him and had to hire a woman to take me to work um, every day because my mom and uh, my stepdad, he was playing professional baseball for the old Washington Senators. And that one, the TV family, the Munsters, was actually my, my family for a few years because right. I was spending more time with them than I was with my real family. So these these shoot days must have been long. Only the only Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday makeup days. Those are film days. Right. Monday and Tuesday were pretty easy. Rehearsal. 
reading only reading on Monday and rehearsal on Tuesday. So it was light days, but you have three hours of school. So uh, when everybody else is leaving early, right. I'm still there hitting the books. Oh, that's too bad. No, you got to get have to have an education. That's fantastic. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, I mean, it's it's like a, a set school is different because it's like your own personal tutor, right? It was. I was the only kid on the on the lot, and unless we had guest stars, it was just me by myself. Yeah. Right, right. Well, we're going to learn more about uh, you and the monsters when we come back. But first, we got to get back to this film. Yes, let's. Teenagers from outer space. You guys stay with us. We'll be right back. Expedition Z06 to base. Expedition Z06 to base. Guard him. I will get the straps. Lie down. Put your hands behind you. from Saul. I could have stopped him. Derek is to be brought back alive. He is the son of our leader. Derek? I reported his actions and was connected with the leader himself. He told me this. He said Derek does not know. As the son of our leader, the High Court will pardon him. He will be pardoned. When the sky is light, we will begin to search for him. Captain, look at this. The Gargan. It is not dead. It has revived. It flourishes. The excessive nitrogenic gas compound shocked its system. Now it thrives on the very same compounds. Then this planet is suitable. Completely. I must resume radio vision contact. Morrow, Saul, secure the Gargan by expandable leg bands. Out of sight in that cave. The size it attains by the time we return will give us an exact growth rate to expect of the herds. At the rate the Gargon is expected to grow, what will prevent it from tearing loose the leg bands and escaping from the cave? We shall be back before that happens, unless it should receive food in excess of the atmospheric elements. We will leave nothing else for it to consume. Imagine thousands of beasts like that. Millions of times enlarged, roaming over this planet. They will be harvested from the air, so there will be no danger to us. Let us be quick. I do not like to look upon it. Now that you report the planet is suitable for our purposes, you are to return here immediately and prepare to lead the transport ships there. Derek's escape could now mean difficulty in our operation should he communicate in any way with the inhabitants, inferior though they may be. If we are to return now, how can he be stopped? Leave your best man to find Derek and inform him he is my son. I will join you on the return trip to meet him there. He may be stubborn. He has already threatened our lives. If that becomes the case, he... he must be destroyed. And any beings with whom he might communicate, they must be destroyed. Your orders are complete. I shall send my best man. I heard the orders, Captain. Let me find Derek. You will wait until the sky is light enough to begin the search. We will leave now and return here to meet you when we bring the Gargans. Fail for I shall not fail.
Can I help you, sir? Yes, I... Would... Would you tell me the meaning of the inscription on this metal piece? Sparky, 1243 Willowcrest Drive. That's just three blocks down there and a few doors up. You can't miss it. Hey, what's what you're doing now? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just trying to make out what kind of clothes that guy was wearing. Looks like some kind of military uniform. Wonder where he's from? Could be from Mars, for all I care. Hurry up that boy, will you? I haven't got all day. In. I'll give you a lift. Lift? Well, it's a long way into town. Okay, it's all right with me. If... Wait. Never saw a uniform like that before. What brings you here? I am searching for someone. Maybe I can help you. Know a lot of folks around these parts. I am searching for someone you could not know. I put Sparky's breakfast out 20 minutes ago, Grandpa, and it's still here. Probably still out chasing gophers. Hello. You've come to see our room for rent? What's that? A fellow to see the room for rent, Grandpa. You show it to him, will you? Joe will be by for me in a minute. We're going swimming at Alice's and I haven't even changed yet. Well, come on in. I'm Betty Morgan, and this is my grandfather. Now, how do you do, son? Uh, just arrived in town? Don't believe I've seen you around before. I just arrived. And your name? Derek. Derek. The empty room belonged to my brother, Bud. He's married now and lives upstate. Your brother? You knew your brother? <laughs> Did I know my brother? That's a strange question to ask. Grandpa raised us both since we were kids after Mom and Dad died. I'm sorry, I... It's just that I never knew any brothers or sisters. <laughs> Your mother and father decided to play it smart and avoid a lot of squabbles around the house. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> I never knew my mother or father. Oh. Well, let's take a look at the room, and if you like it, you're welcome to stay. It's this way. I'll show it to you. Hey, I thought you were getting ready to go swimming. No, that can wait. Right in here, Derek. I hope you like the view. There are plenty of windows. <laughs> What's the matter? You act like you've never seen the inside of an automobile before. What is this? The gear shift. Where have you been all your life? The gear shift. Tell me what it is for. Now look, mister. I didn't offer you a ride to give no driving lesson. Tell me! Sure, sure. I didn't mean anything. Here's the clutch. When I push it in, I change gears. Low, second, and high. And to halt the vehicle? When I want to stop, I press the brake. Right here. And this? The starter and ignition switch. And the fuel, what does it use? Are you kidding? Gasoline, of course. Here's the gas pedal right here. Hmm, it's about time I have the tank filled. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Welcome back. We are going to do letters because Tangela kicked Butch out of a chair. It's actually his chair, you know. 
He's the guest. He gets a chair. It does not belong to you when we have a guest present. So anyways, let's uh, read some mail, right? Right? Right. Right. First letter is from... Spectacles. I was getting there. You know me. I, I would have tried to read it, and I would have been like, the first letter is from... And you would have known. I would have known. All right. I've got my spectacles on. Here we go. Uh, this is from Tim Self. That's a nice name. Uh, Vincent Tangella and Mr. Livingston. You guys are fantastic. We'll talk about that. I watched Bob Wilkins in 1971, and I appreciate you bringing back Creature Features. I'll never forget the first movie. I think it was something like Horror on Party Beach. It was, because we get this same note all the time. Maybe. Anyways, could you run that one again, please? Also, Livingston is cool, and Tangela scares me. She scares us as well. But I hope to come to your studio and watch a movie with her, even though it may be my last... Vincent, you're a great host. Uh, studio. You know, the only studio we have is a place where they cut up the, the tape and make a show, right? The editing studio. The editing studio. So if you want to sit in a room with three angry men cursing at the way we do our show, then that's the studio. But if, if you want to come watch a movie with us, you've got to come to the house, which is quite a distance from where the studio is. All right, and uh, let's see. Uh, Vincent, you're a great host. Thank you. You're a great letter writer. Please invite me. Thanks, Tim Self. Thanks for writing, Tim. Who's up next? This is a quite a long one. Oh, my goodness. I thought you were going to, like, edit these for time. I did. All right. We've got long-winded James Hale from Littleton, Massachusetts. I hope he has nice things to say because this is one of those bad ones. We're going to have words. All right, Vincent. I've been binge watching your show for days on YouTube. Well, he gets a pass now. You can send me a long letter starting like that anytime, James. The letters you typically get are lame and boring. My father, who died a few years ago, loved his sci fi and creature feature movies, especially. Our family heritage of imagination dates back to Pastor Judge and Farmer John Hale of Salem, now Beverly, Massachusetts. The farm and his church is still there on Hale Street. His book, A Modest Inquiry into Witchcraft, was published after his death. Is, is this the man's autobiography for his entire family? It would appear. All right. Sarah Josepha Hale of New Hampshire Colony, a century later, is known as the godmother of Thanksgiving. Well, that's nice to know. I share my heritage and not hates. I've been to many alleged haunted woods, cemeteries, and buildings. I believe the witch trials were supported by prejudice, not witchcraft. I enjoy your movies, but not many of your lame guests. I would like to meet Tangela and hope Livingston is more exciting in real life, too. I live in Littleton, Massachusetts, and love the history of this area. I hope you write back. Thank you for your time. Uh, you know, we seldom write back to people. We read the letter on the air, and then we make some kind of commentary, right? I don't know how to take this letter, James. I mean, you start out nice, and then... You talk about your history, and then you insult our guests, and then you end nice. So uh, thank you and no thank you at the same time, but thanks for writing. Last letter? Last letter. Last letter. This one is much shorter than the last, thank you, from Brenda Bishop in Rochester, New York. She writes, hey, Creature Features, like the show, was wondering what kind of TV programs you all enjoy when you're not watching horror and sci-fi movies during Creature Features. I like watching Dancing with the Stars because I like dancing and stars. Have a great week. Okay, uh, so what do we watch? Uh, well, Tangella loves Animal Planet. I guess she likes the, the cute animals, and that's her thing. And then, uh, Livingston, what in God's name do you watch? Food Network. The Food Network. But what do you watch on the Food Network? I watch food being prepared. Oh. You know, he does not actually cook around here. He's, we've got a cook that takes care of that, but he, I guess it gives you the knowledge to help the cook cook his food. I get recommendations. Right, right. All right, and I like, you know, right now I am watching The Crown on Netflix. It's about the royals. It's a nice film. You should watch it. Something you can learn from that. Uh, well, I think it's a reenactment. I think there's been some artistic license taken, but it's, it's fun. Check it out. All right, thanks for writing, Brenda. That's it. That's it. That is it for letters. If you'd like to send us one in the email, use this address here. If you want to send it in the post, use this address here. 
and we will be right back with Butch Patrick after the next section of Teenagers from Outer Space. Stay with us. I asked him where he was from, Grandpa, and he just said he was from very far away. He did, huh? Well, maybe he doesn't like to talk about where he's from. By the looks of his outfit, I'd say he's raised in a private school of some sort. Well, Grandpa, if he just got into town and can't pay the rent until he gets a job or something, would... Well, what do you say, young man? What do you think of the room? You will let me live here with you? Well, sure. That's why we had the sign up. That's why you came here, wasn't it? Not exactly, I... Derek, I was just talking to Grandpa, and... Well, if you don't have the rent money right away, that could wait until he gets a job, couldn't it, Grandpa? Mm, why, sure, that's all right with me, Betty. But then, if he doesn't like the room... I like it here very much. I would like to stay. Fine. I'll go out and take down the sign. Uh, you can use the phone to have your bags brought over. My bags? I have nothing else. No other clothes or anything? We were not allowed to. I mean, my uniform is all I have. Gosh, you've got to have more than that. Bud left some of his clothes in the closet, Grandpa. Couldn't Derek use some of them? Of course, my dear. Bud wouldn't mind a bit, I'm sure. Oh, golly, that's Joe. Put on whatever you like from the closet, Derek. I'll be right back. Make yourself at home. Hi there, Joe. Hi, Gramps. Betty, I'm afraid I can't make the swimming date. Not till later, anyway. Got a sudden assignment for the paper. Oh, gosh, what now, Joe? I have a list of folks to interview. Say they saw a new flying saucer last night. That sounds like it might take you all day. I hope not. I'll call you as soon as I get through, OK? OK, Joe. I guess a reporter's life can be pretty hectic. You never know when a news story will break. I was just thinking. Maybe Derek would like to go swimming, if you let us borrow the car. Betty would at that, uh, if you don't think Alice would mind. <laughs> you don't know Alice. I won't be able to keep them apart. Hey, what's going on in town anyway, mister? A convention or something? What? Well, those clothes you're wearing. I talked to a guy this morning who was wearing the same kind of outfit. Maybe the guy you're looking for, huh? You spoke to him? What did he tell you? Where did he go? Hey, what's the matter with you? Hey, take your hands off me. You will tell me what he said to you. Oh, why should I? Hey, who do you think you are anyway? Answer me or I destroy you. He came here with a dog tag. Wanted to know about the address and I told him how to find it. Where? Where did you send him? It was an address on Willowcrest Drive. 1243, I think. Tell me how to get there. Just drive down there about three blocks. That's, that's Willowcrest. 1243, it's only a few doors up. <laughs> You don't have to put the brake on so hard, Derek. That is, unless you want us to go through the windshield every time. I have never piloted a vehicle like this before. I will try again. Uh, this time, pull in there. That's Alice's house. Oh, much better. Wait, Betty. Yes, Derek? What is it? When I came to your place, it was because of... Yes? I had just arrived here. I, I did not know where else to go, but... everything was so strange to me, I... I'm glad you came. So is Grandpa. Without any family or friends, you wouldn't like it at a hotel or any place like that. Come on, I hope Alice can dig up some swim trunks for you. Hi 
there. Who is the stranger? Uh, Joe couldn't make it, Alice. I talked Derek into coming along. Uh, Derek, uh, this is Alice. Derek? Hey, I like that. Come on in. The water's fine. Well, we need a pair of swim trunks. I couldn't find any at my house. No problem at all. He can wear a pair of my father's. The folks are gone today, and so are the servants. We have the whole place to ourselves. Uh, where are the trunks, Alice? Hanging up right over there. They look a little large for you, Derek. Well, maybe you better put them on with some clothespins, too, just in case. Well, I guess it's safe to try them on anyway. Over there at the bathhouse. <coughs> what was that? Don't worry, I'll get it. That is what I wanted to tell you about. The reason I came to your place, when I did not know where else to go. Heck, I thought it was a 50 cent piece at least. Why, that looks like who it is. It's Sparky's, Sparky's dog tag. Where on earth did you find it? When I first arrived, I was with some others. One of them destroyed a small creature. Later, I found that among the remains. You mean somebody killed Sparky? Oh, no, Derek, it can't be true. Why would anyone want to kill Sparky? Betty, I'm sorry. Tell me who did it, Derek. They are gone now. Only I remained. But I don't understand. Where is Spark? Will you take me to where it happened? I'll get dressed and come with you. No, Alice, please. You stay here. We'll see you later. Well, well, so Derek didn't come into town alone. If you're looking for him, he isn't here now. He and Betty, uh, that's my granddaughter, they went over to the Woodward's. Why don't you go on over there? No doubt they'd be glad to have you joined in the fun. Yes. How do I go there? The Woodwards are straight on down the street, about three miles, just before you get to the park. Got the biggest house in the block down there. You can't miss it. Where are you fellows from, anyway? Don't believe I've seen uniforms like yours before. Hmm, military secret, eh? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Derek didn't say where he's from, either. No, let me keep you. You're probably anxious to see him. Where is he, Derek? You don't mean those old bones. You can see they've been here for a very long time. No. It was among these remains that I found the metal inscription. But this couldn't be Sparky. I know. He must have been here and his collar tag fell off. That's all. You are not familiar with the focusing disintegrator ray? The what? It projects an isolated beam which separates the molecules of living material in chain reaction. All but the solids, the skeletal braces. Oh, horrible. And you mean Sparky? But... Over there is what happened when the same beam was aimed at me. It missed and that is what is left. Good heavens, Derek. You've got to explain it to me. Why were they doing this? Where were they from? How did you? Betty, tell me. What is the most advanced form of transportation that you know? What do you mean? What's that got to do with it? Please, tell me, Betty. Well, airplanes. Jet airplanes, I guess. Why? And where do they go? From where to where? To anywhere in the world. And that's all? Where else is there to go? I should not have brought you here. Is it about a new secret weapon? Something you and the others invented and then they turned against you? It, 
It is something like that. I guess I should try to find someone I can explain it to. Maybe Professor Simpson at the college. He's head of the science department. He will... What is it, Derek? Betty, when you learn where I'm from, well, you may not understand, but I hope it will not make any difference between us, because... I don't care where you're from. I don't understand all this, but somehow I feel that I've always known you. That we've never been apart. I... Let us go to the professor you speak of. We have to pass the house first, so I can change. What was that? Did you hear a sound? No. Only the wind. What sort of sound? Nothing. My imagination alarmed me. Come, let us be on our way. Well, hello. What can I do for you? You are alone? Could be. Where are the others? The ones who were with you? Why do you want to know that? Tell me where they are. Say, who are you anyway? Never mind. Just tell me. Well, they left here. They're gone. Where did they go? I think you better get out of here before I call the police. You will call no one. You will do as I say. That's what you think, mister. I said you will call no one. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. How'd the theme go? Dun, da, 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 da. That's right. That's dun, exactly dun, how it went. Dun, 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 dun. Very you know, I'm going to learn to play that on the organ. You know, I, every time I go to any kind of music venue, no matter who is on stage, they know that theme. It's, it's, it's like a garage difficult. riff that must be, you know, it must be known by every garage band in the world it's, and major bands. It's a fantastic song. Fall Out Boy just did it. You know, I think I think it's the best theme song ever done for a show ever. Well, you know, I cannot think of a better one. Not even like Breaking Bad. Yeah. It's not better. Or oh, Cheers. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, good. Too no, good. the Munsters, best theme song in the world. We are with Eddie Munster himself, Butch Patrick, and we are watching Teenagers from Outer Space. So on this film, uh, they fried that woman in the pool. Yeah, that was. I was watching it, and she was like the sexy James Mansfield, Mamie, Mamie Van Doren type, right. uh, who was like eyeballing the young guys, and then she wound up on the bottom of the pool as a skeleton. No, you know, if she had like like skin block. 50 maybe she would have been okay <laughs> i don't know it's it's yeah. one of those things we'll never know will we well they're so, getting a lot of mileage out of that 25 cent ray gun right yeah that's <laughs> what you're saying during the break that's like the same gun that you could buy for 25 cents in the dime store i never did understand dime stores what does that mean it means you can buy something for a nickel or a dime five and dime but they sold 25 cent ray guns at the dime store well, that's two dimes and a nickel Oh, <laughs> I see how it works. See, you know, these American things are never explained to me. Mm. There, there should be like a form, a, a manual you could well, read. I don't know how the English pence and pound and everything goes, but, you know. Yeah, we don't, metric. we would barely even use those anymore. Everything costs a pound. Yeah. If you want a ray gun, you have to pay at least a pound. <laughs> All right, so uh, you and the monsters must have been quite an adventure, and those people you work with were fantastic. Tell us a story. A story. Well, 
we had a lot of interesting stuff going on in that show, and one of the reasons it's probably so popular today is they had quality stuff. They had Universal Studios was the monster studio. Right. Um, every studio had sort of a theme. MGM did musicals, 20th did disaster movies, but M the Munsters was a Universal Studio monster movie made for TV. And we were shot on film, and the sets and the decorations and all the special effects were done as if it was a feature. Right. And it looked that way, and the sound was great, and you mentioned the theme. They didn't miss a trick on it, and then they threw, on top of that, they threw in some great guest stars. Uh, the producers had done Leave it to Beaver for six years very successfully, right. so they had some great family value-type scripts going. Right. And then they had, they had good guest stars, and we had George Barris give us some really cool cars, and it just worked, it Fantastic just worked magically. Vehicles. Yeah, it just worked out really well. He made two, right? Two of them. Yeah, two cars, and uh, it, just, it was only a two-year show. We did 70 episodes, but back then... Uh, that wasn't that was not uncommon. Gilligan's Island, Star Trek, three years. Um, Adam's Family was two years. Honeymooners was a year and a half. I mean, oh, is that so? Mm -hmm. oh. So I do have a question about the production, though. Yeah. Why was it in black and white? Everything was black and white back then. Everything? Color color sets hadn't come out until '66, like Batman came out. They were thinking about going to color. They were planning on it, but uh, the last year never happened. The third year never went. Uh, we did a, the movie in color, Monster Go Home. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the first time we ever saw. It. Any of you in color. Mm -hmm. So the sets, were they painted in actual colors or did they just use gray, There's white, and black? Very similar to this. Very similar to this. They, were, they had colors. They had shades of rose and greens and covered with tons of dust and cobwebs. But right. there was color underneath all of it. My goodness. All on black and white. All for black and white. That's correct. You know, it's too bad. They, somebody, somebody once showed a photo from the set from the Adams Family, and it was fantastically colorful, mm -hmm. and we never saw it. Because they never made a movie, and you did. Well, not back then they didn't. They made no. several afterwards. Right. Well, yeah. we're going we're gonna to talk about your movie when okay. we come back. But let's get back to Teenagers from Outer Space, because I'm, I'm dying to see what happens next. Oh, yeah. I'm where lying. The, where, where the skeleton's going to go. Right. Off we go. Grandpa was asleep, so I left a note so I'll know where we went. If I know Grandpa, we'll be back before he even wakes up. Uh, hello. Hello, Gramps. This is Joe. Betty there? No, so she and Derek went out over to the Woodward's pool. Yeah, you could probably reach her over there. Derek? Who's Derek? Oh, you haven't met him yet, have you? Yeah, uh, he rented Bud's old room this morning. Seems like a nice fellow. Oh? Well, the reason I called, I wanted to tell Betty I stumbled onto a double murder story that may keep me longer, but... Well, after I get the story into the paper, I'll, I'll go on over to Alice's and see her there. A double murder, Joe? When was it? Where? We're not sure yet, Gramps. There's only a couple of skeletons. We'll know more when the coroner gets here. We're gonna get busy now, Gramps. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Joe! Joe, I just found a note. Joe! Hello, hello. My golly, you missed them at the pool, huh? Sure am sorry. Uh, Betty left me a note. Now they've gone over to the college to see Professor Simpson. Professor Simpson. This is his office, but he hasn't come in yet. Well, let's wait for him in the faculty parking lot. It's just around the building. You may wait here if you like. No, thank you. We'll wait outside.
Good morning, Hilda. Oh, good morning, Professor Simpson. Have the aptitude questionnaires come in? They're probably still and mimeographing. I'll go down and see if they're ready. Uh, that's Professor Simpson's office. The third door down. Uh, he's head of the science department. Well, that looks like Professor Simpson's car right there. He must be somewhere else on campus. We'd better go back to his office and wait. Hello? This is Simpson, science department. I... Put that down. What is the meaning of this? Do as I say. Who are you? Where is he? The one who came with information for you. Who? You are making some mistake. I am making no mistake. Where did he go? Out there? I don't know what you're talking about. You will speak to no one else. Yes, I know. He came in right after you left. Ah! Oh! Oh, Derek! Oh, it's some kind of foolish joke. I'm not going to keep a job where this sort of thing goes on. I want to believe what I'm thinking isn't true, but... It was a focus in disintegrator. Then... Whoever killed Sparky... But you said they'd gone. For some reason, they want to stop me. Somehow, we were traced here. I want you to get in your vehicle and go to a place where you will be safe. But how could they... Grandpa. I left a note for Grandpa. They must have... Oh, Derek. I will go to your place. No, they may be waiting for you there. I can call Grandpa. Oh, thank heavens. Derek, he's all right. Betty, what is it, child? What's the matter? Grandpa, was somebody there? Somebody you told we were at the college? Oh, yes, a friend of Derek's. Uh, did he find you okay? He's a murderer. He killed Professor Simpson, Grandpa. He's after Derek, and he's probably on the way back to the house right now. A murderer? But uh, are the police... Don't argue, Grandpa. Just get out of there. We're going to the City Hall Police Station right now. Meet us there. Don't worry about me, Betty. I'll leave right away. Goodbye, honey. Yeah, better call the police and let them know we're coming. With what weapons are they equipped? With guns. Why? Guns that emit what? Bullets. What do you mean? Bullets. A centuries old invention against... Hello, operator. Give me the police department. Hurry. <laughs> there right away. Thank you. Betty, tell me how to go there. I want you to go somewhere else where you will be safe. We're safer than the city hall. The police said they're going to have armed guards waiting for us on the front steps. I told them we'd be right there. Let's hurry. granddaughter you're not getting any help from me did they return here tell me i have no reason to harm your granddaughter but if you do not tell me well, you can kill Derek. why should you care about him why shouldn't i why do you want to kill him i it is important only that he leave here that i return him to where he belongs and where is that from where he escaped i need not harm anyone if you tell me where he is if you do not, there will be many deaths, beginning with you, now. He's not here, he's... 
in the center of the city. Where? Take me there. You will pilot the vehicle. Go. Be swift. Alice? Betty? Anybody here? Holy mackerel. You think the tip might have been a phony, Mac? Don't think so, Harry. The girl who called seemed to know what she was talking about. Another call, Mac. I'm Joe Rogers, reporter on the Daily News. He's on the way over. Found another skeleton. Only this time at the bottom of a swimming pool. The city hall is just up ahead in the next block. Oh, I hope Grandpa's there waiting for us safe and sound. What are you doing? Be silent. Continue ahead. You stay here in the car. You'll be safe. He's after me, not you. Slipped off that way. Come on. Stay under cover. Betty, thank the Lord you're safe. I just came from Alice's. There was a skeleton in the pool. Alice? I... Oh, no. We came to meet Grandpa. The murderer came in the car with him. What? But how did you get mixed up in this. Since he killed Sparky out by the old mine, he's an insane killer, Joe. And he forced Gramps to drive here? Where is Gramps? Is he okay? Yes, he's... Well, there he is trying to get across the street. You stay put. I'll go over and help him across. Hello, everybody. I'd just like to call and say this is the best thing since sliced bread. Tangella is a sweetheart. And Livingston is depressing, but he's a realist. But anyways, the show is great, and I hope you all have a wonderful but scary day. <laughs> this is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. You know, Butch Patrick, former Eddie Munster, the music in this film sounds quite familiar, and I think it's got something to do with Night of the Living Dead. Well, you know, uh, B-movies, especially something like this one, the Night of the Living Dead is probably the most successful one, and it led to, look at, you know, all the zombie movies, for gosh sakes. It was know. like the, the granddaddy it of was. zombie movies. George Romero, and, you know, I'm, I go to Pittsburgh a lot, and I have friends in Pittsburgh and know some of the people that are involved in it, but... Uh, you talk about a, a movie that led to a lot of other things. And it's funny, a lot of the Munsters, believe it or not, inspired a lot of filmmakers. I get a lot of people that said, I grew up watching that show. 
and I either got into hot rods or I got into horror movies because of the show. So the Night of the Living Dead had that same kind of feel for people. Right. Have you ever done a zombie film? No, but I'm going to be meeting with Mr. Rob Zombie next week, and I'm going to talk. I'm going to tell oh, him I want to be in yes. one. Yes. No, you should be in a zombie film. <laughs> it's about time. But you were in another film. Yes. Called Monster Go Home. Yes. At the end of our run, uh, they decided to do a movie. They were arguing about doing a third season, and you know, the cost, color, Batman was kind of beating us up in the ratings. So they decided to scrap an episode, a season, and just do a movie. And we did Munsters Go Home. And we actually, in the movie, we didn't go to England, but we were supposed to pretend to go to England, which is what we did. Herman um, inherited Munster Hall. Right. And we had great English actors, uh, Terry Thomas, who right. I loved from It's a Mad, 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 Mad World and other things, and Hermione Gingold, who was a very aristocratic type um, English actress who came in. And we had a great time. So, no on-location shoot. I was going to ask you how you liked merry old England. I told people we went over there on the USS uh, United States. It was a cardboard boat. That's how we got to oh, England. No. We, never, we never left the lot. So, this was like the perfect swan song, though, right? I mean... It was. And, you know, the reason they did it, I found out a few years ago from a friend, was they wanted to introduce the world to the Munsters so they could then syndicate it. And the better, what oh. better way to do that would be through a feature release. Oh, that's brilliant. And we used Debbie. We had Debbie Watson... Uh, we had Robert Pine, who you may know from Chips, the, the, um, the sergeant right. for Eric and Larry. And his uh, son is Chris Pine, huge actor right now. Oh, yes. And he played the love interest for our new Maryland. We had a redheaded Maryland in it because they were pushing Debbie Watson as a um, contract actress at Universal. She had some shows uh, coming up, so they changed Maryland's. My goodness. A little bit of info. Right, right. So there's been other monster attempts. Yes, there have. There was a series uh, called uh, The Monsters Today in the 80s that and Lloyd you, Schwartz did. Were you involved in that? I was not involved. No. I was 32 years old at the right, time. Wouldn't right. fit into the shorts. Well, of course not, but you could be like, <laughs> you know, a relative and do a cameo. Didn't happen. No cameo. Then they did Mockingbird Lane, which about six years ago was right. a pilot that Universal had put a lot of money into, and they had an A-list uh, director, an a Brian Singer, Brian Fuller, and a great cast. And it didn't even make it. Now, is this not the one that they did not look like monsters? That's the one. Yeah, Jerry O'Connell, Portia de Rossi, Eddie Izzard. How do you do a monster film without mon monsters? Well, they called it Mockingbird Lane, and it was supposed to be an inspiration of the monsters show without the actual makeup. And that was kind of where they went off the track a little bit. I don't know. It, the ratings weren't bad. I went on the right. set the last day I was there. I met everybody. I was going to be a reoccurring regular in it, so I was hoping for it. Oh. And it just didn't work out. That's too bad. No. One episode. They, yeah, they did it as a one-off special, two-hour movie, uh, or one, I think it was a two-hour movie on Halloween about six years ago. That's too bad. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, Mockingbird Lane. Yeah, Mockingbird Lane. All right. Speaking of Mockingbirds, how about teenagers from outer space? How about it? Let's go back they're, to that film. They're getting into mischief. They're going to do it. All right. Off we go. Teenagers from outer space right about now. What are you doing down here? Go into the building. That is the safest place. Look. Here on the sidewalk, drops of blood. Betty, go into the building. Derek. <gasps> Give me the weapon you have, Derek. Slowly. One sudden move and I slay you both. Derek, oh, Derek, do as he says. Get in! You will take me to a man of surgery to remove the metal pellets from my flesh. That is not possible. Yes, we must. We must do as he says. I know a doctor's office. We'll take him there. She is very wise. Now go! the way it happened. Next thing I knew, he was trying to fire out the window at Betty and Derry. I swerved the car and... See, where is Betty? 
That's funny. She must be around someplace. But the car's gone. They must have left without me. Well, don't worry, Gramps. You'll get an escort home. I'm going to phone the story into the paper and then drive out to the old mine Betty mentioned. The old mine? What's out there? I don't know. That's where she said Sparky was killed by the guy. Sparky, our dog? She didn't tell me about that. Hey, Mac, over here. Blood spots on the sidewalk. And where's that car that was parked here? That's it. That's how the killer got away. In our car? Then Betty and Derek, they must have been kidnapped. You've got to do something. You've got to find them. This is it, Derek. That's Dr. Brandt there. He looks like he's leaving. Stop him. Block his path. <laughs> Is there some emergency? I have a house call to make. Office hours don't begin for another hour. Go inside, all of you. I say, what is this? He's holding a gun on us, Dr. Brandt. We had to bring him here. He wants bullets removed. I see. I'm afraid I cannot be of any help. You will need hospital facilities for anything else. Be I'm... silent and get inside. You will remove the pellets here, now. Leave these people alone, Thor. Where is our ship? I will take you there. No, it is gone. Do as I say! Derek, please. Doctor, you must try. Lie down here. I will prepare an anesthetic. The pain will be great. I will not be drugged. You will simply remove the pellets. Both of you, sit there. I shall keep you covered. Take heed. One treacherous move and they pay with their lives. Now proceed. Tell me why you have been searching for me. It must have been important for you to have... The Gargan to be raised here. You could not be allowed to run free. But the specimen reaction was negative. It was verified positive after you escaped. The captain should have let me kill you when I had a chance. And why didn't he? I saw him stop you when you fired at me. Because... Because he just learned that... You are the son of our leader. I'm not to be killed. Why did you fire at me in the city? Your life or death was put in my hands. A traitor does not deserve to be our next leader. The only reason you do not fire now is to force attention to your wounds. When that is done... Proceed! Antiseptic must be applied to your wounds, and you will need bandages. I'll get them. Come back! I, I, 
You, you cannot get away. Oh, I was terrified he'd see us before we got out of there. He may yet. Get in. I will take you back to the police. In his present condition, he cannot remain conscious long. By the time we return with the police, he should be completely helpless. Derek, what was he talking about? The guard on to be raised here, and, and you, the son of the leader. You said you didn't know your father. I did not know the things he said. I thought they'd gone. I wanted to forget them forever. But now I know. They plan to return. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Miss Moss, she'll be arriving for office hours. I can hear you. I can hear you breathing. You, you cannot escape me. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. Uh. Already left? Office. Miss Moss, thank heavens I've reached you. This is Dr. Brandt. Where are you, doctor? There's an emergency patient here. I've done all I can. Listen, Miss Moss. He's a murderer. He held hostages at gunpoint to force me to remove bullets. We were fortunate in escaping. You must get out of there. A murderer? We're sending the police, but if you treated him, he could revive at any moment. Y yes, doctor. Uh, I'll leave immediately. You will come with me. Put that down. Miss Moss, Miss Moss, what is it? Drop it, I said. What do you want? You will help me to escape. Go out! That vehicle. Is that how you arrived? Yes, that's my car. Get in. You will take me where I say. If you disobey, you will be killed! On the way, Dr. Brand. They. It's no use. I was too late. They're gone. Thor, a 
has escaped? But how could he? You said he would be helpless that... Without aid. But my nurse, she didn't know. She bandaged him, gave him an injection. He revived. Oh, no. We've got to tell the police. They might be able to do something. I'll tell them. I'll tell them what happened. Derek, we'll all be caught. They're sure to find him eventually. It is what I know is coming here. The Gargan. They are small when young, but they can attain the, the size of this building in no more than a day. But can't you stop them? The only chance is to duplicate the operation of the disintegrator. How can that be done? The men of science here might be able to do it if they could get Thor's as a model. Only there is enough time. You know, I don't get this guy. Animals are humans. He just seems to like killing. There's more to it than that, Joe. There's something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Look at that tree over there. Used it for target practice by the looks of it. I don't know. Let's take a look in the old cave. Where are we going? You've got to tell me. It is not far now. You can't escape. The police will find you. Possibly they will. But barricaded in the mouth of a cave, with you as hostage and me with this... How long do you think you can hold out that way? Long enough. There will not be too long to wait. Hey! Bring your flash bulbs up here. This tunnel is black as pitch. Okay, I'll be right up. Already. No! I won't let you kill anyone. I see you do not value your life. He's getting away. Follow him. No! Dare refuse. <sighs> Are you hurt badly? I don't think so. Just bruised. Oh, thank heavens it's over. It was like a nightmare. I, I wish it was over. Oh, what do you mean? Back in the cave where he shot at me. Some kind of man-eating monster. Poor Mac, the guy I was with. I could hear the thing tearing him apart. He was dead in a few seconds. Oh, how horrible. What could it have been? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'm afraid the nightmare has just begun. The man guilty of these strange killings now lies mute in confinement at General Hospital, where he is being treated for minor injuries. 
Authorities plan to transfer him to city jail tonight. The fantastic murder weapon he used has not been located. Mystery still surrounds the disappearance of a man-eating beast said to have been in an abandoned mine shaft outside the city limits. These newsreel shots were made immediately after the city police surrounded the cave and found it completely empty. Evidence in the cave appeared to confirm the report that a monster of some sort had been shackled there but had somehow attained strength enough to pull itself loose and escape. Groups of armed volunteers have set out in search of the creature, hoping to track it down and destroy it. Meanwhile... Thor crash just below here. If that disintegrator is down there, I'm going to find it. Derek, I just thought. The monster that escaped from the cave, it must have been there at the same time we were. What I can't figure out is, why did it escape when it did? Why not sooner? It would not have been large enough, but the man it consumed increased its growth rate. Then, how big would it be now? There is no telling. You stay here. Keep the door closed. Betty, go back. It's too dangerous for you We can find you that thing twice as fast if we both look. You make me angry. But I like you very much. In a moment, the moon will come from behind a cloud. It'll be easier to see what we're looking for. Yes. The light from your moon, it will help. My moon? Where are you from, Derek? I think I know. I think I've known for some time. You're not from this world, are you? I did not know how to tell you. It seems impossible to believe. You're so much like us. Like my brother, grandpa when he was young. And to think. We were made the same. The only difference is that we were put on places far, far apart. What is it like where you're from? Babies are bred and raised like livestock parented by the most perfect specimens of our race. If you become ill, you are put to death, as are the old. You won't be going back ever, will you? I shall make the earth my home, and I shall never, never leave it. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned.
This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are so happy you guys are staying up late and watching this with us because we, you know, we've got Butch Patrick here. You had to stay up. You had no choice. <laughs> and this film, right, Butch, this film in The Lobster, or The Alleged Lobster. Yeah. Uh, you know, all I'm seeing is a shadow. Well, you know, I was seeing it. I kept waiting for it to actually fall into the ocean and get cooked because I had a giant lobster bib ready oh, for it. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> A little cracking device. Yeah, they could give it the Rega in the right? effect and just cook them right there on the spot. Right, that's incredible. Deshelled. Right, I agree. Well, maybe we'll see it at the end, right? Let's hope so. No, I don't think we will. I've seen this one before. I don't remember a giant lobster. I remember a giant <laughs> Probably shadow. Probably not. All right, so we've been talking about monsters yes. extensively, but you did so many other things after that. I did. I, I, I did a lot of work for about 12, 12 years or so from 60 to 72, and I was very lucky. I, I did some interesting, unusual shows. The Munsters in Lidsville come to mind, right. of course, and I was lucky enough that the, um, the Beatles came on the set one day, and I wasn't there, and I missed meeting them. You missed the Beatles. I know, and I was, like, really depressed, but I wound up doing the Monkees episodes. I worked with the Monkees for a whole week. Well, that's almost as good. Almost as good. When, right. you're, in eighth, when you're in the eighth grade and you're 14 years old, the Monkees were huge. Right. And to work with them as an equal for a week was very exciting for me. I, I was lucky enough to work uh, on Chuck Jones's only feature film he ever did in The Animator. Now, Chuck Jones is The Animator. The Animator, right. Bugs Bunny, all the Warner Brothers, the Roadrunner, uh, Wile E. Coyote, all the good stuff. And I worked with him for two years on a movie called The Phantom Tollbooth. So in between stuff, you know, I did a lot so of... So just as a voice actor? Oh, yeah. No, it was right. live at the beginning and live at the end. And animated in the middle. Oh. It was very cool. Called The Phantom Tollbooth. Oh, I'll have Great to look children's that one book. Up. Mm -hmm. And of course, you did Lidsville. We did Lidsville, say in summer '71, and in between, I did a lot of guest star roles in here and there, and worked with a lot of great people, and had a had a wonderful time. The business was a lot of fun for me. I the '60s, I was very blessed. I had a really good time growing up in the business, and uh, when I wasn't at the studio, my I was lucky enough to have a stepdad who played pro baseball, so I got to go to the oh, ballpark wonderful. and meet a lot of baseball players right. back right. in the old days when baseball players were like regular folk. And they all had second jobs in the off season right. because they didn't make fifty million dollars a year. No. <laughs> Not like Eddie Munster did, right? Not like I did. I didn't make fifty million a year. I actually right. I made a little bit more than my stepdad did, but we both didn't make much money. So the monkeys. The monkeys. The monkeys. So who's your favorite? Uh, at the time, Peter. Peter was. Because he was the hippie. He was the he Peter had the hippie beads, cool. he had the uh, the squaw boots. Davey was very nice, but today I'm still friends with Mickey Dolans. Uh, see Mickey all the time. And Michael is now touring again. So well, I they're it. all like producers now, right? They're well, Michael got into producing very early with his elephant parts and his video ranch. He was always a very cutting-edge kind of guy. And if you ever get a chance to see him, he puts on a heck of a show. Him and Mickey are, pat are touring together. And uh, it, he's a great guy. We were both, you know, he was a child actor, circus right. boy. Of course. And just a great, great guy. I do have one thing I want to ask you. So you were on the sets. Mm -hmm of different programs in the 60s and 70s. Yep. And you've been on sets recently. Yep. In the past, you've seen. Sure. What's changed? What's different? The biggest difference that I've noticed is the way they just go about technology, the monitors, the digital age is here. We did stuff in the old days on film. It was very much a lot of rehearsing. Uh, it was just kind of a, the, the, the work day itself is pretty much similar, but you're surrounded with much more technology. Right. But everything else has remained the same. Pretty much preparation from an actor's point of view. You know, mm -hmm. knowing your lines, being on time, hitting your mark. You know, basically the structure is still the same of the technique, but uh, the technology surrounding the acting is a little bit different, a lot different. So if if like you mess up, you can do it again because you're not like throwing film away, right? That's pretty much it. And what we back then that you didn't get to see the dailies till the next day, so you had to be pretty darn sure they would look around. They sound good, this good, this good, this right. good, and you'd have to get like seven or eight yeses before they would move on. Right. And now they could just look and play now back. Now they can look and play back. That's amazing. All right. Well, speaking of playing back, shall we get back to the end of this film? I, I want to see how many times they can use that skeleton. I tell you, I'm just I gotta go. I gotta go buy a skeleton now. Just, just, just I must have one. Well, you know, if you do buy extras, give it to the people who made this <laughs> film because they obviously need more. Definitely. Same 
same chemistry. But I do type. like the old cars. I'm a car guy, so I've been oh, looking no, at a I lot of cool the, 50s cars in this. Those cars are worth so much money now. I know, that 56 right there, that, oh, that one they're cruising around in. Wow. 56 Chevy. Talk cars during the break. Okay. All right, off we go. Back to Teenagers from Outer Space, and we'll be right back soon to wrap it up with Mr. Butch Patrick. Stay with us. The moon has come from behind the cloud. Derek. The crickets. It's so quiet. The garden, get back! It won't work. Run. Go start the motor. Hurry. somehow when Thor was thrown in the crash. You said that that thing would keep growing. If it does, what can stop it from wrecking the city? And I may be able to repair the damaged part of the disintegrator. If I can, we will stop the Gargan and give the Earth a weapon against invasion as well. If only I can get it to work. Exhausted, he fell sound asleep with all his clothes on. Do you think you can fix it, Derek? I have found the damaged part. Such a little thing. And yet it has the power to destroy as it does. It is worthless, unless I can figure out an energy substitute. Maybe it won't come into the city, Derek. It will come to the city. For more food, if nothing else. Johnson at station 86, out by the hills, due northeast. There's some kind of a monster. It suddenly bobbed up and seemed to touch the sky. I have not been drinking. No, I can't see it now. It must be behind the hills, but I'm getting out of here. The few remaining survivors of the search party that was attacked report that the beast they encountered was many times the size they expected, indicating that the monster has some strange power of rapid growth. An exact description was we have a bulletin just received. According to a report not yet confirmed, a beast of seemingly gigantic proportions has been sighted lurking in the hills due northeast of town. City officials have called for military help. Planes and troops are expected to arrive within the next two hours. Meanwhile, citizens should take refuge in places of safety. Cellars, bomb shelters, as directed by civil defense administrators. I repeat. Derek, they say it's coming. It has grown. It's just northeast of town. I'd better wake up Grandpa. We'll all go down to the cellar. You go there with him. There is a chance I can do something yet. What? What are you looking at? Those wires going from pole to pole. They carry the source of energy used for illumination and power in the homes. Yes, electricity. And the wires are spread throughout the city, are they not? You mean you might be able to make the disintegrator work by hooking it to... Possibly. The power were great enough. It's the only chance, so I've got to try it. I can help, Derek. I'm going with you. Oh, uh, what's going on? Uh, what's all the commotion about? Grandpa, Derek and I are going out to the edge of town. Wait for us here. First, I must put the disintegrator back together, and then find proper tools. I can load the car with every tool we have in the garage. All right, then. Let us go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Why aren't you in the cellar, Gramps, with Betty? What makes you think Betty's in the cellar? She's out somewhere with Derek again. Everybody's supposed to take shelter. The monster from the cave, it's approaching the town. Huh? Then that's where they must have gone, those crazy kids. Joe, we've got to try and find them. You mean they... Come on, then, let's go. Derek, look. You drive away from me. You can't cut live ladders. Emergency. You must connect me with the city electrical generating plant. Hurry! Generating plant. Hello? Please listen to me. You must do as I say. The monster is coming towards the town. I'm at North Ridge Road. We have a weapon here that might be able to stop it if we can connect it to the power lines. Who is this? I'll have to check with... You have to believe me. There's no time to check with anybody. That looks like him. Derek is climbing down a pole. And look what's coming. We're not going to make it in time. <laughs> Restore the power. It is ready. Hello? Turn the power back on. Okay. It is not enough. It is not enough power. Can you boost the power any? Please, it's not enough. I'll try to speed up the generators. Derek seems to have some kind of weapon, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> if only there were more power, Betty. Is there any way to generate more power? We've got to have more. I could join in more circuits, but it may blow off the line. Try anything. It's our only chance. over to the scientists now. It is too late. You mean they're coming? Already? Your people are here for you. I must leave. They will take care of you. But, Derek, you promised... You said... I know what I must do. You must not interfere. Betty, thank heavens you're all right. Which has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Somehow I feel that I've always known you, that we've never been apart. You are the son of our leader. You won't be going back ever. Will you? How did he get a weapon like that? It makes me think of what the killer used. It is. The same thing. But who is he? Where did he come from, anyway? Some place none of us has ever heard of before, Joe. What do you mean? Clear from another planet. Far out in space. Hey, wait a minute. Betty, this is no time to be joking. I'm not joking. Where do you think the monster came from? And the man who was doing all the killing and, and the unheard of weapon he used? But how did they... They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. The flying saucer? And I thought those people were seeing things. They weren't. Derek looked into the sky just before he left here. Somehow... He could tell 
More on the way. Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Keeping the prisoner. The killer? He's at General Hospital, but. Then take me there. John, don't the disintegrator it won't. Betty! Trust me, Betty. Trust me. Derek seemed like such a nice fellow. Grandpa. He promised me something. He promised he would never leave. That he would never go back. I don't believe he wants to break his promise to me. I'm not going to let him. What can you do about it, honey? I think I know where he's going. Out by the old mine. I want to go there. I want to see him once more. He's hurt you enough, Betty. Grandpa, please let me go. I must. in this building. It looks like they haven't transferred him to city jail yet. What are you planning to do? Never mind. Just get out of the car and walk in front of me. Take the prisoner. Get their guns. Hand them to me. Now get in. You face the wall. Keep your hands above your heads. I was stupid, Thor. Very stupid. But that is over. We are returning to meet the ships. Together. Why do you let them live? Kill them! There is no need. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet. Go! Ships of an alien source are approaching from the sky. Radio contact has been attempted, but cannot be established. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. What made you think he was coming here? 
told me they'd be coming. Told me he wouldn't go back with them. That he'd stay. That he wanted to stay. Betty, let me take you back home. No, Grandpa, look, here comes Joe's car. What are you doing here? Why do you concern yourself with them? Destroy them! Why, Thor? They cannot change what is going to happen. What is going to happen, Derek? You must understand. Death must come to all. Sooner to some, later to others. The guide ship is about to land. We must go to meet it. Your promise, Derek. Don't you remember your promise? I have not forgotten it. You call that the guide ship. And it looks like there are a hundred more still in the sky. What are they going to do? Derek told me. The other ships are loaded with Thousands of those horrible creatures, like the one Derek killed today. Why are they bringing them here? To raise, for food, a safe distance from their own people. And they don't care what happens to us? Derek cared. He wanted to make the Earth his home. He promised he would never leave. <laughs> oh, Joe! <laughs> I would have used the disintegrator on them, but it will not function without energy supply. It was damaged when you crashed. I had to bluff with it. It is just as well. They will be the first victims of the Gargan herds. So you were able to bring him back, Thor. He brought me. I am sorry I acted the way I did. I am ready to take my punishment. There will be no punishment, my son. You are my father? I am. I have watched your progress since you were born. You have excelled in all things. I was most disappointed to learn that you were deserted. I came this trip hoping I would find you had returned. Has what I have done not disqualified me? Am I still to... You are back. That is all that matters. Your mistakes were made because of that book. It blurred your mind, but only temporarily. How is it you are able to leave the planet? Will not the government structure collapse in your absence? We will return immediately, as soon as the Gargans are unloaded from the fleet of ships. The people are unaware that I am gone. Yes, we must leave quickly. If your absence were discovered, it would likely spark the beginning of a revolution. I am not the only one who had that book, Father. Yes, I know. And you will help in tracking down others who may have such books. Yes, I... I see the fleet is approaching. They are flying from radio signals from the guide ship, are they not? Let me be the one to direct them in for landing. Captain, are the ships close enough to receive the landing signals? Momentarily, but... Then go below, Derek. You will bring them in. Derek, what are you doing? Unbolt the hatch. Looked like Derek went in first and closed the entranceway. Whatever's in the sky, they're getting mighty close. Derek has some plan. He's not doing what they want him to, I'm sure. Master control to fleet. Master control to fleet. Increase speed. Set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. Increase speed. 
Open this hatch at once. The ships seem to be converging and increasing their speed. They cannot land. He does not plan to have them land, but crash. They're coming right at us. Derek's doing it. That's what he planned. But he's inside there. He'll be killed, too. Get down inside the cave. My son, please think of what you are doing. Turn the ships around before it is too late. Hold course steady. leave it. Teenagers from out of space. You know, it sort of had like an angelic religious thing there. He kept his promise. He saved the earth. Right. Told her he wasn't going to leave. He didn't. Nice ending. Well oh, done. Nice. He's definitely in the earth now. Is he's he in the, he, he is part of it. And they, everybody, nobody, no one's going to come back. They, he took them all out in one big boom. And no more lobster. What do you think of the film, Tangela? Yeah. She, you yeah. know, if she nods her head like that, she she liked it. A That's lot. good. Okay. If she if she growls a bit, then I know she did not like it. All right, Butch Patrick. So, what are you doing next? Well, 2020, uh, I'm going to be on the road again. I feel like Willie Nelson sometimes, but this time I'm going to be going around the country with my Munster coach because I do a coach to coast YouTube channel where I visit people and drive them around in my car and do all kinds of great stories of Americana, which I enjoy. I'm gonna go back and visit the house that I just sold, which was my haunted house my grandma used to own. Oh, you had a haunted house? Yeah, I had a haunted house. And then next time that. I come visit, we'll talk about that. Right. And then um, I also have um, personal appearances lined up. I'm gonna be doing an escape room. So people that wanna go through a five puzzle, three room, Munster themed escape room can come out and visit me. Where's this? This will be wherever I go. It'll, oh. I'm towing it around the country. It's like a tour. It's a tour. Right. It's a tour and you, can, and you can check out my tour at Munsters.com, which will lead you to all my- Munsters.com, um, that's, you know, that's the best URL you can Yeah, and, and I got my Facebook there and my Instagram and everything else that you need in this day and age. But it's old school, and it's and very... And you're doing something with Rob Zombie. I am. Monday, I'm going to do a commentary for the new Munster Go Home Blu-ray. A new Munster Go Home Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's actually kind of a secret, but hopefully you, they won't notice. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we like to spoil things here. Yeah, well, you might. No, no. It's what we do. Yeah. There's such this, this rule about... And you also have a YouTube channel as well. Yes, my YouTube channel, Coach to Coast, with K's, KK, Coach to Coast. And what, what that show, what's that show like? It's basically what it is. It's, it's interesting biographies about all the things, the places I go, and along the way of interesting people that I find and stories that we put together, just uh, of human nature and human interest. How fun. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show and coming all the way out here to visit us. You know, you came all the way from Florida just to see yes, us I and did. you. So, and we hope to have you again soon. Thank you. All right. As for you guys go, thank you so much for staying up and watching the show. You know, you made Tangela quite happy with you. She was a bit cross with you, but since you stayed up and watched the show tonight, she is quite pleased, as am I. We'll see you next week. Different guests, different movie. I have no idea who, but we will find out then, right? Have a great rest of your night. So, uh, Butch, you know, I, all this talk about the monsters has me thinking about next Halloween and I've got to choose a costume and I'm thinking maybe I could do Herman Munster. What do you think? I think you'd be better off thinking about the Adams Family. Mm -hmm.